So as I mentioned, um, there's sort of a lot of things you take for granted about game engines. Um, you know, if you've worked in Unity or Unreal, it's just like, okay, here's the box that you learn how to click that turns on fog. Um, and we can't do that because spheres. So we actually have custom solutions for a lot of basic things. Um, so we have our fog spheres here, uh, and this basically we have a, a system that bakes out a 3D texture, um, and the 3D texture determines density by height, um, as well as you know the depth of the planet here. Uh, and so it's basically a shader that goes on a sphere. And you know, we have like an LOD version when you're far away. Uh, and then it also uses a color ramp um, to determine uh, there's two axes here. One is depth and one is like the angle of the light. Um, so basically, you know, in daytime, the fog is this bright blue. And let's see if I can make this bigger. No, not, not very well. Um, in daytime, it's this bright blue and at nighttime, it's darker and less dense. Uh, and so that was a huge thing for us because we really wanted to sell the feeling that you're on these tiny spheres uh, flying around in space and atmosphere is a great way to do that. Uh, but there's more to it than just the fog spheres. Uh, we also have this fancy atmosphere shader. So if I turn off, I can uh, turn off the wireframe here. Uh, so if I turn off the fog, uh, you can see that it, you know, the fog tints the surface, um, but the part that tints space is actually different. Uh, and this is a very fancy shader that our tech artist slash engineer extraordinaire Logan wrote. Um, and this is actually um, you'll see similar atmosphere shaders and, you know, like flight simulators and stuff like that. But again, those are based on a flat plane. So you have, you know, it's just from the ground up. How do you simulate an atmosphere? And then how do you do it with light? Um, Logan had to make one that's on a sphere. Uh, so this is the same kind of thing as the fog sphere. Uh, it's just a shader on a sphere. And this shader is very fancy and does a lot of math that's based on actual atmospheric math. Um, so we have the... We have the Rayleigh constant and the Mie constant, which are both like, you know, math principles that determine how light scatters through an atmosphere. Uh, and then we have some like hacky video game stuffs that we can hand tune a little bit better. Um, but you can see as I'm rotating around in the editor, we don't have the sun in this scene. Um, but if the sun was here, you'd see that when we're looking at the sun through the atmosphere, it scatters through um, the atmosphere like this. And that's how you get sunset colors uh, onto right. the hearth. Uh, and it also creates a nice effect where you know, the sun looks more like space photos when you're out in space, but when you're on Timberheart, it has that nice soft glow like we see up from Earth. And I guess by playing with the values of the atmospheres on different planets, you can achieve different colored uh, refraction, right? And just different effects for you, and really make each planet feel like individual. Exactly. So we just choose the base color of like the particulate in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of fun to try like, you know, a giant's deep. Hey, what if we change it to green and you end up with like these red sunsets? And it was kind of fun to just like play around with, yeah. you know, what different atmospheres might look like. Okay. Um, but that's not all. We have yet another tool, um, which is our ambient light system. Yeah. Uh, so this is basically if I turn on lighting here, uh, we don't have the sunlight, as I mentioned. Um, so this is our ambient light. It's basically the light that you know, in real life is bounce light where, you know, the sunlight bounces around. So in shadows, you get like blue from the sky and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, we have our ambient lights are spherical. Uh, normally in games, it's just like a color that you pick or maybe a texture that determines time of day ambient light. Um, we have them on spheres. Uh, so what this is, is basically Logan wrote a clever tool that hijacks point lights. Um, so if you plug a cookie into a point light in our game, it turns it into an ambient light. And we can control the outer radius, the inner radius. Uh, if you make it a shell, then the inside is uh, dark, basically. So we use that for like caves in the middle of planets and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, we can control the intensity, just like other ambient lights, um, fall off, you know, things you'd be familiar with from ambient lights. And we also have textures here. Um, and the texture is basically, uh, I'll open this up in Photoshop. Uh, the texture is, uh, it's got similar to the fog color ramp that I showed earlier, there are two axes. Um, one of them is time of day, and the other one is basically a 3D map. Um, so the horizontal axis goes from like nighttime to daytime back to nighttime. Uh, and then the vertical axis. With time. Yes, exactly. So based on your angle to the sun as a player, because um, it's not actually based on time, right? Since you can move right. around the planet. That's right. um, it's, it's based on your angle to the sun. And so that'll be the horizontal axis. And then the vertical axis is basically, just draw some arrows here. Um, 
on brush. Don't, don't be slow. Um, so this color is the light that's coming from above an object. Okay. This color is the light that's coming from below, and this color is from the side. And so if we look at it in the game, uh, nope, come here. Um, if I just grab like a gray sphere here in the editor. Use that fancy snap tool. Um, New planet's really small. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so you can see on the sphere, it's really easy to see uh, the ambient light. At nighttime here is, you know, this sort of darker color at the bottom, and it's brighter on the top to sort of mm -hmm. simulate, like, light scattering through the atmosphere. Uh, but those are just hand-authored textures that we paint for each planet uh, to make them lit the way we want. Yeah, and I think in other games, you know, you would go into, you'd probably go into the lighting uh, settings for Unity and play with the overall ambient lighting for the scene but for you there are many different planets within this one scene right and so you, and you can jump between them and you can even have your probe on one planet and you're standing on another planet so you can't just have it all have the same ambient lighting they really need to have their own individual lighting and i guess this was the solution exactly uh, so yeah. i can just quickly like just for fun throw a different ambient light on timber hearth so we'll grab the hourglass twins um so you can see that changes so, you know, you have more reddish colors and like a strong red bounce light coming from below um, mm -hmm. because on Hourglass Twins, you have the red canyon rocks. And so, you know, that bounce light is like faking the simulation of actual bounce light. Yeah, so there's layers to this. Really, like it's just really a bunch of layers that come together to make it just like each planet has three different layers. So we said the, just to summarize, it was the fog, the, uh, the atmosphere, but then the ambient lighting and those three things come together to give the planet like this individual personality. Exactly. Yeah. So once you combine all those, then you get, you know, a lot of the color palettes and whatnot that you see throughout the game. 